How do you think cabinet could appeal yes. to younger voters and millennials? I, th <clears throat> I think it's really critical at this moment for the federal government to acknowledge the grief that a younger demographic is feeling about being locked out of housing as renters, as owners, and meet the moment. And so we can't then just pick an easy villain like today's flavor of the month, which is some international student that also wants to rent in a home here, which might be exacerbating competition for rent. We need to move from the easy villains and say, look, if we're going to make your hard work pay off, young people, we need to commit to the goal to restore affordability for all. Home prices need to stall so that earnings can catch up. That is something I think younger demographics is just desperately waiting to hear. And I think any party that's willing to say that can actually re-attract them back to voting for their vote. Where do you think the Liberals need to then improve in order to focus on, those, on that generation? Yeah, I think that they need to uh, recognize that there's an underlying disease, a, a broken generational system that's giving rise to a range of symptoms that are harming younger people. Climate change, housing unaffordability, government deficits. And so they need to so and say, hey, our country is no longer working fairly for all the generations. It's taking hard work from young people and not letting that pay off. We see that and we are desperately committed to fixing it as urgently as possible. No party said that yet. No party's really acknowledged that hard work isn't paying off for young people like it used to. And then we need that, they need our governments, provincial and federally, to not just focus on young people, but turn our attention to their parents and grandparents. And say, parents and grandparents, how can we have you become part of the solution? How will you contribute to the adaptations that are necessary to make hard work pay off for your kids and grandchildren and return them to a housing system that can provide them a home? not just you, an investment in wealth, and that can return them to a, a climate that isn't always just on fire, and that can give us government budgets that invest in them urgently, and their kids urgently, not just later in the life course of your medical care and retirement. And then are you surprised to see polling now that actually shows millennial voters are turning to Pierre Polyev over Justin Trudeau? I think we need to give Mr. Polyev credit that he is tapping into the housing grief that a younger demographic feels, which has then given rise to a disillusioned <laughs> democracy, and he's tapping into that anger. It's kind of got a doom and gloom momentum with the younger demographic. It's working, I understand it. But if it gives rise to more cynicism, it has younger people opt out, and we need them to opt in with their parents and grandparents to change the system, to change our policies, created decades ago in many instances, so that we can make our policies ready for the moment, which will make Canada work for all generations. Cynicism won't get us there. For years, it's always talked about the older voters. The older generation votes more really sways election. Do you think we've reached the place where millennial voters have a significant impact and can make the difference? Oh, the numbers absolutely show that millennials can shape uh, election results. They have numbers that now rival baby boomers. What they don't have is voter turnout rates. So boomers still show up at the ballot box more regularly than do younger people. So long as that is the case, it will be hard to fix our dysfunctional generational system because politics responds to those who organize and show up. A key sh moment of showing up at the ballot box. So we actually need those boomers to be increasingly voting not just for their medical care and old age security, but for their kids' housing affordability and the climate that's necessary to sustain everything. Are you expecting to see these, both of these leaders now shift more to a, try to appeal to younger voters more now? Well, Mr. Polyev has already done this amazingly well in his leadership race. He really has you know, tapped into a youth despair, and he's turned the Conservatives from typically a grey party to a much more younger party. We know that Prime Minister Trudeau initially got elected in 2015 by really galvanizing younger audience. So absolutely, that voter group is in play, which I think is why this theme of you know, an intergenerational contract between older and younger is actually meeting the moment because parties are recognizing the uh, frustration with younger folks. And if we can figure out quickly how to turn politics around to protect a healthy retirement while also protecting a healthy childhood, home, and planet, then parties can really win the day. And so I think the, the party that gets that narrative along with the substantive policy change required to bring it to reality can win the next election. And do you think that sh for, the, for the Conservatives that shift is about housing? Uh, housing is at the center of everything. It's affecting immigration, it is affecting affordability, it is affecting inflation. If you're not talking about housing effectively, and not just the easy, you know, skimming, looking for the easy villain, if you're not talking about housing in a substantive way where we are a country that has become addicted to high and rising home values, I've heard Mr. Polyev talk about a housing aristocracy in Canada now, and that's not just some company over there, that's actually those who are homeowners like me and those especially older than me who got in some years ago and our homes have made us millionaires. 
we need parties to be talking about that and how to address that because that unlocks our ability to fix it for their kids and grandchildren. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? That'll do. All right, great. Thank you so much. You're welcome.